the goals I set for myself this year was to do more wildlife photography. And my favorite kind of wildlife, other than other animals, are birds. Not only am I fascinated by their ability to fly, birds seem to come in an endless variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Utah, in the United States, is one of the most important areas in Western North America for migratory birds. It hosts millions of shorebirds, waterfowl, and other species as they make their way south or north depending on the time of year. And this morning, I just found two long-billed curlews having breakfast. I'm at the Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge, north of Salt Lake City. It's 74,000 acres of upland, wetland, mudflat, river delta, and freshwater marshes. Upwards of 300 different species have been recorded on or around the refuge, and I'd like to get some nice images of at least a few of them. I'm using a cloth backdrop as a sort of mobile blind, but most birds are notoriously skittish, and I'm not sure I'm fooling anybody with my setup. Having a long lens is essential for bird photography, as I've discovered. Today, I'm shooting with a 200 to 500 millimeter zoom. I have a 1.4 teleconverter to extend my range further, but it seems to degrade the image quality just a bit, so I don't use it often. A 600 millimeter prime would be ideal, I think, but those lenses can be very expensive. So renting a quality telephoto lens from a local camera shop could be a good option next time. Of course, having a large sensor with a lot of megapixels means you can crop and enlarge the bird's profile even as they do their best to keep their distance. I find that shooting from the car can help, especially with some of the larger species. And you also have the added bonus of using your window to stabilize the camera. This great blue heron was highly suspicious of me, but at least he hung around long enough for me to get some shots before he took off. I was able to get a few images I liked, nothing spectacular, and I can see plenty of room for improvement in both gear and technique. But all in all, it was a beautiful morning, and it only whet my appetite for more. Capturing the intricate behaviors of these extraordinary creatures can really be a thrill. So I wondered, where else could I go to enjoy some amazing bird photography? And then, I had an idea. I've made various images of birds over the years, but using only a 70 to 200 millimeter lens for a long time meant I could never really get in close to feel like I'm in the animal's world. The only image I've actually been proud of is one of a puffin I accidentally stumbled upon on the coast of Iceland. I love images like this where I feel like I'm connecting or seeing something in the eyes of my subject. Founded in 1938, the Tracy Aviary in Salt Lake City is one of the largest and oldest aviaries in the U.S. with over 400 species of birds. It's a nine-acre paradise for our feathered friends right here in the heart of our fair city, and I thought this might be a nice place to practice my birding skills. It takes time to develop techniques for shooting animals, so a more controlled environment, like a zoo or an aviary, is a great way to relax, take your time, and enjoy some wildlife that you may not have regular access to. Treasures of the Rainforest is a large open-air exhibit that allows you to walk freely under the foliage, as if you're exploring the Amazon. I enjoy peeking through the branches, looking for flashes of brilliant color as the birds flit and fly to their various perches always keeping a curious eye trained in my direction. I 
I set my aperture wide open at 5.6 and the ISO on auto, so I really only have to think about the shutter speed. The birds move quick, so I'll only shoot as slow as 1 250th of a second, but faster if I can depending on how high the camera is cranking the ISO. The Bally Mina, the Metallic Starling, the Black Naped Fruit Dove, and many more are all active, filling the air with their unique and expressive songs. Their stunning beauty is only matched by their ability to navigate the branches and trees effortlessly. How would it be, I wonder? to have wings and to fly. Throughout the park are numerous ponds and waterways. Swan, geese, and red-headed ducks all bathe and play in the sun with their impressive displays. For the ground-dwelling birds, I like to get low, trying to compose my shots so that any man-made structures are not in the background and always looking for the most natural settings that I can. Sometimes it can be a challenge to find an environment free of shadows or objects like rope or other items that can be distracting, but I do my best and enjoy the process all the same. Even if I can't always get the image to look completely natural, some of these creatures are so magnificent that it's worth it to me to take a picture just so I can study them later. Wire netting can make photography especially difficult so I look for sections of the net that is in shadow so that light is not glinting off the metal. If a bird like this scarlet ibis is some distance from me inside the enclosure, I can put my lens right up to the net and often the camera will not see it at all. It's amazing what kind of results you can get with a thoughtful approach to each setting. The Chilean flamingos have got to be one of my favorites. These elegant water birds have an unrivaled grace and beauty about them that is mesmerizing to behold. Their impressive height and body size make me wonder how their slender legs can support them. They are almost constantly preening their feathers, which accounts for their radiance and splendor. They also search for food, bathe, and socialize in the most affectionate ways. Their behaviors have a quality of serenity that instantly puts me at ease, and I spend more time at their habitat than any other. make my way to another exhibit called Pelican Pond, which features one of the most interesting birds you'll find in a landlocked state, the American White Pelican. These massive aquatic birds can grow up to 20 pounds with a wingspan of almost nine feet. I was captivated for some time as I watched them swim in formation, much like they do in the air. This place is a wonderful start for understanding the process of bird photography. Editing these photos in Lightroom and Photoshop will further help me learn more about working with feathers, colors, and contrast, and how to draw out the behaviors and personalities of these most fascinating animals. There is so much to know about this subject. In some ways, it's one of the most challenging, but in others, it's also one of the most satisfying and it's a subject I intend to pursue for many years to come. <laughs>